I brought the phone. I brought the phone here, man. Oh, you got the Google phone? Yeah, yeah, I brought the phone here, man. Hey, that was my thing. You know, you know I was had a Google phone for a minute. But yeah, but you... I had you a Pixel. It. The, is it the Pixel? Yeah. Yeah, man, I had a Pixel for time. You're going to have to show me. You're going to have to bust me on it. No, no, no. The only problem with the Pixel... Okay. Yeah, the Pixel's hard. The only problem that I found with the Pixel, yeah, was for some reason with like Instagram, with the videos, so the videos come out proper, but when you post them, yeah. they're like all pixelated. Yeah. And I don't understand why they haven't fixed that. I mean... They, no, I actually, I actually watched a video about it one time. Yeah. And it had something to do with, I'm gonna say this all wrong, but it's like the way that Apple do things obviously is in a way that they separate themselves completely from everyone. So it's got something to do with them for why it's like that. But um, yeah, I'm going to find it. I'm going to pull it in the group and we'll, and we'll probably discuss it next time. Come on, man. So you said they give you a whole phone Yeah, phone. man. Yeah, nice man. Nice in the man. I went to the England game. You know what I'm saying? I see them trying to abuse my brother. Shout out, Saka. Well, were they trying to do that? Yeah, the media have started already. They've started already. Colby Mayno all of a sudden is not the golden child no more. Oh, all They're of a trying sudden. to get. But all love, of a sudden. But them love Cole Palmer not realizing yes. he's from St. Kitts as well. Right. But we just keep it to ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Them ones there. But I was over there. Shout out Google. Shout out the love. Shout out um, all the man them that were there. And I'm going to Manchester tonight. More oh. stuff. Places and faces. Oh, what is it? More a part. It's of all the... part of the thing. Yeah, man. We C-say, love. Say, shout him out. Huh? See, say. Faces and faces. Right, shout, yeah, him shout him out. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, I fuck with him, actually. But heavy. Yeah, Heavy yeah. is a real one. Real one. We should get him on the couch, actually. Have a little reason with him. He I would be a him. good person to talk to, man. Yeah. Honestly. Because that concept, even the concept that he built of Places and Faces, it's such a sick concept. But the way he's been able to still keep it creative, inventive, interesting today. Yeah. Allow it, bro. Yeah, what's, yeah. what's that um drink brand, the rum? Havana. Do you see the oh, collaboration yeah. on Havana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Come yeah, on, man. Yeah, you got yeah. Heady One in there, and yeah, It's exactly. crazy, man. Big up Cissé. Place yeah, his faces. Much. Shout out Barney as well, my brother over there. Um, quickly, just talking about your album of the year, and I'm not sure what mine is yet, mm. right? But I did want to bring up something here. Mm. I, I wanted to bring up something. Okay. I realised... Go on. I was part of a problem. Oh, no. Oh no! I realized I was part of a problem. Have you moved? And to I the need solution? to make and I need to make a phone call. Actually, I actually need to make a phone call. It's a light one. It's just all in my head. Yeah. But I think so about it over it. and over again. That was a banger. So, so I got a phone call from. I'm not going to say his name, but um, a black executive that we check for. Okay. He's rang me and he said to me, "Yo, um, he's got this Thames record." Yeah. Um, it wasn't, I can't remember what record it is now. I think it was when, when they were first starting the campaign. Okay. So the thing, what the vibe was, look, got this Thames record and trying to figure out a way that we could do a collaboration between with you, R&B and Slow Jams or whatever, yeah? And I wanted to do it because I checked for him. Mm. But in my mind, I was like, I completely, because I love Thames, by mm. the way. I really love Thames and I, I saw Thames live. Remember, I came here one time and I said I saw it at Coco, sick, whatever, team's cold, whatnot. Like, I really, 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 really rate Thames, yeah? But I thought to myself, I don't, I just completely dismissed it before I even really heard the record. I just thought, I don't think this really works with um, me and Slow Jams because of the style of music that she's making because I'm, I'm, I'm putting her in an Afro Beats box in my head, yeah? That's what I'm doing. So when I'm saying to him, when I'm saying to him, I don't think that it works, I'm not saying that I'm putting her in this box, but subconsciously, that's what I'm doing. Wow. Without even listening to this record. I just instantly just assumed, you know, it's probably going to be a little bit more... And this sounds so mad for me to even say, because this is so far from who I am as a music man anyway, yeah? But I'm going to get to a point. So anyway, I thought... I did say to him, I was like, I don't know if it really... I'm not sure if it's going to work or whatever... And then like, he was just like, okay, cool. No worries, fine. Co- had a conversation about something else and then went. And then um, I saw Scissor talking about um, being pige- pigeonholed and saying that like, you know, she doesn't just make R&B music and that like, she wants to be known as this and that or whatever. And I've always had this opinion of like, I think it's really important to like embrace your value and where you are from and the style of music. You can do other things. Mm. Of course you could do other things. But like... Where's your to, home? 
Yeah, where's your home? Sometimes when artists say, I'm not just a, I'm not a, like I'm not a rapper, like, I'm an artist. artist. I hate, I hate it. it. I feel like throwing everything. I hate it. I'm not a dance artist, I'm an artist. Do you know what someone said to, shout out Vince Staples, when a guy said to him, oh, it's, it's good to see you transcend from a rapper to an artist. His response was, you know that's slightly racist. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out Vince Staples, yeah. man, we need it. But carry on, sorry, please. I don't like that. No, I, I really, really don't like that. No one's telling you that you can't make other styles of music. But it's important to have your home, though. And embrace that, because ultimately, that's where you've come from. Do you get what I'm saying? If you didn't have that, we wouldn't see you here. So don't just dismiss them. You see what happens to homeless artists? They start doing grand. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and drill. And, and dr- they're this. And they're come that. home, because we're nice over here. Come on, man. We're like, come, man. No, I chill. But anyway, sorry, carry on. So, but I started to, like, unpack it a little bit more, yeah? And I started thinking, like... Oh, I, I, I think, yeah, I think I see what somebody might be trying to say. What they might be trying to say is, instead of saying that this is not your home and that this is your home and that you're just a broad thing, yeah, I think for some of them, they're thinking, I make a certain style of music, but every once in a while, I might make something that is a, a wider or it might be different. Mm-hmm. But the place that that music can exist wouldn't be accepted because you just automatically assume that I'm this. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's maybe what I did a little bit with Thames, where it was like, yeah, I can still see her as that, but I need to look at the record for what the record actually is, as opposed to what I just think she is. Because maybe this record could actually exist. So then when you put this into a broader term of like, of the people who actually call shots. So let's say, for example, um, the uh, playlist, the people that, that run playlists on the, the um, maybe Spotify, Apple, radio stations, all of this type I of stuff. You. If you I have that mentality that, of, yeah. well, nah, it doesn't really fit here because this is just what they do, then you're blocking a blessing for them in a sense. 100%. Do you get what I'm saying? You should, we should be able to look at this and say, even though you are that, no, this this song here can exist here, 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 and here. But you know what? Yeah, I hear what you're saying. You understand from. what I'm saying? You're so right. I felt like when when the Thames thing has developed now, yeah. and I'm listening to the Thames album, and I love it now, and I'm like, I'm listening to certain elements of it. I'm like, yeah, th- there's stuff that can exist in all different places. I just at the time when I heard the first one, completely dismissed it. So imagine the people, and imagine, I'm a, what, when it comes to this music to yeah. you, my mind is super open. Come on. So imagine the people that are in these places that are just doing that and blocking a blessing left, right and centre. It made me feel a bit uncomfortable. I've do you got know a phone what? call to make. Do you know what? Yeah, you do. And you got to say my bad. <laughs> yeah. you got to say my bad. Yeah. But here's where the balance of life, I feel, can come into play. Well, Although... Chucky can say my bad now. Sometimes I always say this. If I have a message, how do I get it through to you? Ooh. There are so much things happening in a day. If I present in, uh, information to you in a way that it's, I could present it to anyone, I'm not giving myself the full capacity to get the message through to you. Ooh. So if I believe, if, like, if I was, for example, not to say, I don't even know anything about who was working yeah, in terms yeah. of anything, but if it was me, I would tell you, you need this. And then I would explain why you need this. Right. And then I would make this happen. Because once I've got it in my mind, that is part of this plan, I have to give you the energy of belief because yeah. I know why you will go, yeah. maybe not. I've already preempted that yeah. you might say that because of the, the type so of he's the, you got Essentially, it. his pitch was wrong a bit. A little bit. Yeah. I'm yeah. just saying, the pitch was a little bit Hackney Marshes, let's go Wembley, I was yeah. there, shout out, Google. So that's all I'm trying to say <laughs> to people in life. Let's think about our pitch. <coughs> Just think about your pitch. Yeah. Trust yeah. me, if you if I'm if you was like if I was an agent or a manager, my client would love me. Yeah. Everyone else would hate me. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got a pitch that I love. Yo, we got to pitch this. Uh. But some people I know are very humble and they don't really want to step on toes or intrude and want to be a. And then some people are me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Direct as well. Come on. But you know what as well, yeah. But pushing all of that aside, though, I'm still standing on this thing of, I hate the, I'm not a this, I'm a that. I'm an artist. Like, I just, I can't, I can't stand that. 
Why can't it be I'm an R&B artist but I flex over there sometimes? Have yeah. you heard my interpretation of that or have you heard my interpretation, interpretation of, of this? Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Because Skept has done multiple different interpretations of music but you're asking what he is, he says grime. Yeah. So he doesn't need, it's like what's understood don't need to be explained. 100%. He's saying to you he's grime but guess what? I live a life where I don't just live in a grime environment. I'm global. Yeah. So let me show you my little global vibes. Uh, you know where I'm coming from? Max Tiempo, we're over here. Martinez brothers, we're over, over here. here. Jammer, yeah. jamming. Shout out my brothers. It, I like it. Yeah. But you know who you are, you know where you are. Isn't that privilege though? Because he's at the top, so he can say that. But he's always done this. He's always done that, bro. So you're looking it's at it from your perspective. Listen, sometimes, you know, the question. but I have to make sure that the question doesn't go into too much because yeah. we had this theory the other day that we're all looking at just the same thing in life just from a different angle. Yeah. And the moment you're the individual that walked around the bottle and looked at the bottle from loads of different angles, I can always see where you're coming from. But if you can't see where I'm coming from, walk around the bottle, big man. Take a look, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's too funny. <laughs> I also wanted to just have a quick conversation about generational gaps. Ooh. Music, musical generational gaps. He's I'm, so method man struggling. Brother. It broke my heart. I, have, I, have no, I don't have a question. I just wanted to just talk about no, it. No, I like that. So I saw, um, I saw online, Summer Jam was on, yeah? Hot 97 Summer Jam. Been doing it every year for flipping the beginning of time, yeah? I didn't even know it was on, but I'm not over there. I don't really, you Come know what on. I'm saying? Yeah? Didn't feel like there was no heat though. But anyway now, Red and Method Man has performed at this thing. And then he had said, yeah, generational gap's too wide. I ain't doing this, yeah? So I had a look at the, um, the lineup. Let me see if I can find it very quickly. Because I wanted That's to have a look at what was going on. One sec. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Give me one second. Here it is. Okay. So, yeah, I looked up the lineup, yeah? Got you. Uh, Davido, um, Sleepy Hollow, Method Man and Red Man, Sexy Red, Offset, um, Doja Cat, um, and T Grizzly, yeah? When I looked at this, do you know what I thought? I thought that Red Man and Method Man's agent made a mistake. So do I. I think that they made a mistake. Same with Cameron in the interview. <laughs> so the same with what? Cameron on the news interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah, is literally. the wrong gig, man. This is the wrong... What, what's supposed to happen in a situation like this, yeah, is the agent is supposed to say, okay, Hot 97, I understand who you are, what you do, and your history, and whatever else, yeah, but I also understand the climate. If you're going to book a legacy act, yeah, the legacy act... Ha it has to be a special thing. It's got to be presented in a certain way, yeah? So, could you explain to me, one, what this lineup looks like, firstly, and two, how do we make Red and Method Man special within that, with them being hip-hop royalty? If, if you can't do that, and there isn't going to be a way to do that, then unfortunately we can't really do this booking, because it's just going to look really weird. So... Now, when you look at this lineup here, yeah, mm. you've got Method Man and Red Man in the middle, in small, in amongst Offset, Sexy Red, De Do um, Doja Cat, and Sleepy Hollow in big. It stinks. From whose but I But I also From understand that. I, I understand that Summer Jam probably would be thinking, do you know what? Like, we can't do a Summer Jam and not have a legacy act. We've got to do something. But I think if you're going to do something, you have to do it right because the generational gap is massive. And Red and Red Red and Method Man are really good performers, you know. Very you can still put them in a you can still put them in an arena like this with those people or people like that and it slap a little bit. It's just got to be teed up a certain type of way. So the pitch the pitch Everything's is terrible. The pitch, the pitch is terrible. The pitch is terrible, bro. How many marshes are better than this? I'm telling it's you. Tottenham marshes, which to actually does, doesn't even have no pitches. It's right, just grass. then. It's just yeah, grass, it's just Jackie. Grass. <laughs> Jackie, yeah. um, to be honest with you, I totally agree. But I, And there's so many different angles where we have to start speaking about awareness. Yeah. Awareness is very important. I was speaking about it on my Instagram the other day when I went to Maya's party, which was in a really nice swanky hotel where everyone was dressed up. And I turned up in shorts. My awareness was poor, Chucky. Yeah. So we have to improve awareness. Now, I know if someone says to me, Poet, Vibber want to do, uh, can we get Vibber to do a show? The first question I ask is, what's the show? Who's on the lineup? Yeah. Now, if I believe that there are different 
there's acts there that are similar to me in the quote unquote black black experience. Yeah. I'm jumping at the time because we make a similar sound. Yeah. Now, if I was again working with Meth, uh, Red and Meth, and I looked at that, I would have said to them, "My guy, this ain't the one, you know." Yeah. Davido is a whole different audience to Sexy Red, which is a whole different audience to, and none of them audiences would cater to something like you. The hip hop experience today is so commercialized that you can have a hip hop artist, which is so commercial that they're bringing in an audience of people that will not know who the hell Jadakus is, that will not know who the hell, I don't know, Memphis Bleak is. Like there, there is that type of hip hop fan in here now. Also to do with how long the history is. Yeah. We should also blame the parents. Oh, a hundred. <laughs> Why though? When I was growing up in my household, I was consistently reminded of my history in various different we ways. We can do this again. Various different ways. Yeah. Whether there was artifacts of things on the wall and yeah. Billie Holiday, I'd see pictures of her and then my dad would be playing jazz and then reggae and then he would play hip hop from Tribe Called Quest right up to Tupac. And it was up to me to figure out what was the sector for me. Yeah. So I started off with Tribe. Now you took my heart for the evening. I was cool, I was chill. But by the time I heard Fog Passion by Tupac, yeah, I decided different. to stay there. Yeah. It felt right. When I heard Jigger Man, I stayed there. So I got a bit of a history lesson. My dad was like, here's all the rap, here's all of this, here's all the jungle, all these types of genres. Figure out what you like, but that's your history musically. Yeah. Today, Zion and Cleefar come to my house and say, Papa, I'm like, what well, one? ABC, Michael Jackson, no problem. We have given them the history. They know reggae music, all of these types of things. I'm making sure they know who they are. Now, a lot of the children I see today disrespect the past. They also disrespect their parents and disrespect their grandparents. So they have no respect for the past. They care about here and now. So wait, okay, where does the- Our generation didn't. But where does the disres where did the disrespect start then? The disrespect started when Pickney started having Pickney. Because if you take a look at the age gap between me and my parents, it's a reasonable. But you see when the gap started getting smaller, the appreciation started getting smaller. So I that's the part I lightly disagree with. Oh, maybe, maybe I'll maybe tell I'm, you why. Go on. Because uh, young people are always having kids. The, I know. It's just the it's just the climate of life was very different. You know that back You're then, right. You know you're, that you're, back, yeah, right. you know back in the day, yeah? Right. You see, you take away social media and you take away all these things and whatnot. And you go back to a time in life where, you know, certain men worked in trade and then certain women did whatever jobs that they did. And then they finished work at five o'clock, whatnot, come home, five channels on the TV. I'm nothing was happening. Nothing was happening on Sunday. You remember them time there? But listen, if you're trying to get a bus on a Sunday, you might have to wait all an hour for that bus, you I know? You. Yeah? There was no shops that opened. Sunday was Sunday. Closed on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. You're my that. Chick-fil-A. So back then, people were getting married younger. They were like, there was families that were, um, that were starting a little bit young. Like they were starting younger. I think now, as we're getting older, the, yeah, there are a lot of pitneys having pitneys. There's a lot of that, yeah. But there's also a lot of people out there that are having kids either late or there are some people that are scared about having kids because they, you know, there's this thing about wanting to be in a certain place in your life before you'd start having kids. Like all of these, there's bare different things going on. Climate change, everything's getting mashed. Bare stuff there's is bare happening. There's bare reasons there's why a lot of things, Yeah, there's a lot of things that's happening right now, yeah. But I think, yeah, mu I can only speak for my side of things music was obviously a big part in telling our life stories and growing up you know what i'm saying and there was there was naturally a respect for the stuff that my mum was into and my grandparents was into there was a respect for that i don't know if that respect is necessarily the same today but what is i find interesting is is like what is the young parent at home playing what are they? What is the average person playing at home musically? My, that is a like what? Cool what, are, what are you playing? Right. Like, you can't. The thing is, yeah, we can't even really criticize that too, too much because enough times when we was listening to what we was listening to, sometimes some of the older lot would look at our thing and be like, "Oh, you lot are just listening to noise." That's so there was a respect in it. But they said that to me because it wasn't reflective of my musical choice. When I started listening to Grime and Garage, mum was a little bit like, what's going on here? Yeah. But they're not living my in life. In your room, so... she's thinking, what the hell is that? Because uh, yeah, yesterday she heard Outcast, mm. <laughs> Prototype, Track 7 on Love Below. She heard that for three hours on repeat. Strongly. So she doesn't understand how we go from, I think I'm in love, 
to ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. It it's, is confusing. No, it is confusing. <laughs> I get it, man, but yeah, wait, wait, wait. I hear it. Is it also to do with the fact that the generation <coughs> that I was raised by were born in Jamaica? Yes. That's so, the- like, they couldn't hide, or the, sorry, they couldn't avoid their blackness. So the appreciation well, the for everything would consistently be there and be there to remind them. Then when you come to London and things are a little bit different, when you become a parent here in London mm. and you've had a different experience, maybe just your interpretation due to your environment gives you a lack of respect for your past. Because in this country, we know the English people also don't like their past. Strongly. It's quite bad. So I can understand why you wouldn't want to revisit your past. But the you bits. see our past crazy yeah. and I just think maybe just maybe one of the reasons not the only reason but the energy of the countries that we're in sometimes or are so ashamed of their past that they don't even teach you that appreciation for past whereas where I'm from we love our past we love the fact that we've had to fight and we, we consistently speak about it mm. but every time you speak about it in especially when I was younger oh I go back to slavery again are we because I'm like yeah you don't want to speak about it it doesn't make you look good no. so when, when that mechanic is deployed in music I guess Maybe sometimes subconsciously they're doing the same thing and they're not even aware. Because uh, in grime, we still love D-Double. That's a bit. But then in certain rap, they just say, oh, my man's played out. And I'm like, what? We, that, you, that is not something you do in grime. In grime, all the people that have been there putting in them bricks to make up this wonderful building, there is so much appreciation show for them. In certain sub-genres in new age rap, they don't give a damn. Oh, he's old, he's washed up. And I'm like, so where does that leave room for the person that's classic? Because I think gets is classic. Yeah. Bashi, classic. Yeah. Kano, classic. We're, well, not... we're, we're essentially having our first versions of those as well, by the way. That's another So we're point. having our first version of the older guys that are living within that classic or that are living within their, what's the probably the best way of putting it? Like, like they're our superheroes, but they're the, our first generation of artists that are like, they're older and they're just guys that are seen a certain type. We never had that before. So these never... are our Jay-Z's and Buster yeah. Rhymes and... Yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know, I, I don't even know how you would, I don't even know how you would label that, but it's like, that... there are first versions of that. Though. The first senior figures in the scene? Huh? The first senior figures in the scene? Yeah, yeah, it's the first senior figures. Okay. We never really had, I mean, I guess we did, but how did we look at them? Like, you know, some of that, some of the, if you look at like prior to, to Graham, for example, you look at some of the garage guys and whatnot, yeah, there's certain elements of them, like uh, So Solid, for example, we look at, they came from, they essentially came from Garage, then, you know, they started changing up their thing a little bit. Um, but you look at some of the MCs, it's different, like M- MC Kai, DT, all of these lot, like, I feel like they're seen as separate. They didn't make music like that. They were just MCs that just were, you know, doing their thing within that genre. These are the first guys that we got that are essentially MCs that made bodies of music that are the first senior bodies of that. Do you get what I'm saying? First classic albums. First, first classic album. Uh, um, classic song Home Sweet Home is like 20 years old. This year, isn't it? What? Google that. Check that. I f- I'm sure it is. Home Sweet Home is 20 years old Maybe this year. Maybe okay, no. If not, it's, def- it's in and around that. 20 years old, bro. And then, but also That's look at the way that we see, so how, how look at the way Kano? that we see Kano as well now. So he's been outside for that long, but now we, everyone has a, a respect for him as an older man who's doing his thing differently. Yeah, 100%. Do you get what I'm saying? 100%. So it's our first versions of that. How old is Kano? Because I started looking into people's ages when they wrote. So Kano was 18 when he wrote Home Sweet Home. 19 years ago, okay. So, so Kano was... So Kano was 19 when he wrote Home Sweet Home. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm putting... Let me tell you this. What? Though. I'm sure P's and Q's was, like, is older than, than the that. actual... You get what I'm saying? Like, P's and Q's didn't just happen and then the album happened. P's and Q's was outside. And then... You it get what I'm saying? It kind of gathered pace, so therefore it had to be part of a bigger body of work just so you could identify it and find it. Wait, wait. Yeah, you, so you're telling me Kano was, like, 18, 19 19. when this album was made? Yeah, in and around now. Nah, he's gone. He's crazy. There's something wrong with him. These men are too... Th- this this is crazy. It's only when I look at it like that, when I recognise that Lauren Hill was only... Sorry to go quickly go left. She was like 21, 22 when she done the miseducation of Lauren Hill. Yeah. Now, that's crazy. Yeah. These people are gods. Yeah, to know that they, like, they had a limited amount of life that they lived, but lived 
in a certain way which gather the perspective for them to be able to use that within their art and create that mad. How can you make it's music cr- mad. that talks to a 60 year old and you're 21? What the hell do you know? Yeah. That's a level of intelligence I really appreciate at this point, especially when I listen to Kano. I'm like, brother, I can't lie to you. Some of the things that you were rapping about and just your interpretation of it, typical me. I used to repeat to, that rhythm. To pieces. To pieces. P's and Q's, mic check. Uh, I listened to 9 to 5 the other day. 9 to 5 is so good. Uh, just in terms of the perspective of like, yeah, I used to play football, but I gave up on that. And it was like almost uh, the tale of the hood of the guy that used to play football, maybe sold drugs and done a couple of things, but he, his heart was in music and look where it is right now. Uh, 9 to 5 is a bad boy tune, yeah. bro. To tie in as well, yeah, the 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 younger with the older and the respect thing, yeah? Yeah. In where things were different is that I could imagine... When Kano was, for example, 18, 19, the people that he would have been looking up to a lot of the time probably would have been all in Jamaica. Yeah. You know, dance or artists in Jamaica and maybe a couple of people in the States or whatever else. Yeah, of course. Whereas now I think for the younger youths them here, a lot of the guys that they can look up to are, is a Kano. Yeah. Because we didn't, when Kano was young, there wasn't a Kano here. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? 100%, man. There wasn't one of them here. We had to go over that that side to do that. But, you know, like, elements of that, f- you know, when you think about that, yeah? Which is, there's a pro to that and there's a con to it because it's like, not there's no con, but I'm just going to deep dive a little bit. Find in the a sense con. That, like, in a sense of, you see, when you start just going forward, yeah, and we've been here for a certain period of time, there's certain elements of our core that starts to get diminished a little bit and you start seeing that even in elements of food you know we was talking about you know our parents coming from a certain place or whatever and you know you respected that thing a little bit and you might at home you would eat this and you would listen to that or whatever we're here creating our own thing which is good we take many things from the environment that we're in right now but also from where we come from and we all put it together that's how we get the things that we right and then now, before you know it now, no one can't cook the food that we used to... That nah, we Chucky, from. that's it. Nah, <laughs> nah, you're, you, nah, 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 you're right. No, he's talking the truth. The reasons why we're losing the respect and so on and so forth is because the way it is being pitched isn't the same. It's all about pitches. Yeah, it's crazy. As long as my pitches love me. It's crazy. <laughs> Fam, it's all about the pitch. The way that this culture is being pitched to this generation, why would they respect it? It's just full of an older generation of people sometimes that just hate on the youngest for no reason. It's full of sometimes so much negative hate that you take a look at that long-term journey and go, I don't want to be that at 40-something years old. Maybe we need better examples. Well, no, nah, but do you know well, what? We do now, I, think we got, I think we got some good ones. Great I mean, look examples. at flipping... Let's go with Skep, for example. It's like, I know enough man looking at Skep. Uh, do you know what I think? I Skep think a lot crazy. of the artists here yeah, in particular, or the, the ones that are aspiring to be artists, will look at them, man. And they, there's like, there's a generational gap, but it's not that big. No. Man are looking at them and respecting them and, and wanting possibly wanting to be around them or being just inspired by them. But what could potentially happen now, yeah. because the scene is as old as it is now, we could have a Hot 97 situation where... You put a bunch of people on stage and whatnot, and there's just a big generational gap, bro. It's like you could have yeah. X, X amount of young artists and that in there, and you can throw in a, you could throw in a, you could throw in a Kano, and man would the youths then would go crazy because a lot of them see him on Top Boy and whatever else, and they know some that he can do thing or whatnot, but. He could do P's and Q's and they, they would not not they would not know what's going on. Yeah, and that's what breaks my heart because he's not, no disrespect to this guy because I heard a tune he done the other day on that block to block freestyle, I went crazy. He's not common, bro. He's not LL Cool J. He's not like Lil Bow Wow. He's not like the guy that just completely diminished music and didn't do it. Even throughout the Top Boy journey, he was releasing music. So the fact that that education is not something that people are gravitating to, it even makes me go, am I doing my job adequately? Because essentially, what should be happening is the way we package things that are a representation of us should always be to a higher level than the way we package something like that's not 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 for us, but kind of for everyone. If that makes any sense. Go go. What do you mean? So like, if Kano drops something, like for example, Bashi. I'll give you an example. So Bashi's done his freestyle. Yeah. His daily duppy. Yeah. I'm championing this stuff. I'm like, yo, Bashi. 
Go on. I saw one comment from someone, and it seemed to be an older person, but going left. And I'm thinking in my mind, like, look, you see when these generations of people keep doing stuff, those are the things we should champion. You're only going to champion him when he goes and does a commercial with McDonald's. You're going to be like, oh, he's doing his thing. But I'm like, no, he's just <laughs> done a daily duppy and he's done his thing. If it got one view or we got 10 million views, yeah. that's not where we're from. We're from quality here. So we shouldn't allow the position or the number to influence our decision on whether this is good when it comes to our thing. Yeah. When it comes to the compromise and you do a collaboration, then by all means, you take a look at the metrics that decide whether that's successful or not. Mm. But when it's our thing, I think we should start celebrating it more. Like when I saw, um, shout out Tiffany Calva, Unknown T, D-Double, Chip, Jamie. When I see that freestyle that they done the other day, a grand freestyle, bro, I'm called all the oh, man them around. That. Brother, it's cold, but it's like, that won't be celebrated. But if my man done a jeans store collaboration thingy, Bob, everyone goes vroom, vroom, vroom. And I'm like, Tiffany Calva, I rate you for that. Yeah. Unknown T. You two have got leverage in the commercial space and what you're saying is grime. Yeah, not everyone, Champion but the that. thing is obviously not every generation is going to be unified in in loving a particular thing because everyone's in different spaces. No, but that's why, exactly. That's why it's up to the people that are in senior figures that love certain things to consistently sing and so everyone's aware of what is potentially for them. I think what's happening is when people from the older generation come out, people just go, they're washed or this, that and the fourth. And I don't mind the youngers doing it, but if the olders are doing it, what are we teaching the youngers? We have to celebrate the best examples of these things, even if it isn't, he's in Top Boy. Yes, Top Boy, sick. Mm. But if Kano makes a body of work like he did the other day, and like we spoke about it here, we celebrated it here. That should be something that's universal because that's Kano's body of work. Yeah. Top Boy's sick, don't get it twisted. The man's not trying to play that down, but that's the collaborative part. Why did it have to get there before we rated him if he was doing great stuff anyway? For the community type of thing, if I'm making any sense. Yeah, but we, the thing is, we already know all of this. It's the younger generation that will see it differently. And of course they're going to. Because that's the gap, that's the gap. I don't think the older generation, all, like I don't think there's a million people that do what you do, Chucky. Mm. I see Margs talking about things genuinely. I see Lippy talking about things genuine. I see some senior figures talking about things. That it doesn't matter how polarized it is or it's not. Yeah. They just chat about it. And I'm like, but that's the way it used to be. I would yeah. go to Rewind forums to find out the best new MC. And it wasn't based upon who was the most popular. It was like, nah, he's cold. Yeah. Same thing with the way Grand Daily used to be back in the day, whereas now the quality control threshold has changed. And even the senior figures are kind of, I feel like are responsible or involved. Mm. It's all about finance. It's all about money. It's all about that, which changes the ethos over here. So then you're gonna your respect level is different. Mm. D Double deserves the same level of respect as anybody else that's rich in the scene because of his contributions to the scene, how relevant he is, and what he's done. Do you know what's interesting though? Do you know what's interesting talking about the generational gap? If I'm being honest, yeah, I've seen an element of the generational gap even at Grime MCFM lightly. Oh, yes. And like, it's been interesting to watch because I love it, by the way. I think like- Shout out Jamie. There's so, yeah, shout out Jamie. There's, there's so many different elements of that that I really love, yeah. I love the fact that um, this, the, the, the night, the theme of the night is like radio. It's like how things used to be on, on whatever radio station. So, you know, you might have this set here and that set there. And it's like, you know what I mean? It's like sometimes you'll have a phone um, as well, so people can te just send a text in and just say their number, or you could just say their the last three digits of the number. I think all of them type of things are cool. When it gets to the grime, um, the grime set now, I remember what it was like when D Double would touch the microphone. I remember, <laughs> and those are my favorite memories in life and being there. And I'm so proud to have been there and being able to stand, be so close to that. Yeah, and. Now, I think that like the younger youths, they know that this is a legend on the stage. Yes. They know it They and they see it, but they don't know the bar the same way. Do you get what I'm they saying? They don't know, but do you know what they do know? Because some of the young- they, they embrace him as a legend and like you can see pockets of them. Yeah. And the pockets are loud. The pockets are loud, but it's different. And it's, that's fine though. That's fine. That's but fine. There's still an appreciation. Shout out Anthony Joshua as well. I saw that video the other day as well. Yeah, and yeah I, I, see that, I, see I see that. I see that. A lot of. Where was that? Sorry. I'm not sure where that was, I, I, but that was I don't incredible. Want to lose your that was so, so sick. Yeah. Now, but what I do see is a lot of appreciation for D Double. And although people don't know the bars, because there's people that grew up at the time that don't know the bars. I don't know all the D Double yeah, bars. True. Come on, yeah. my bro. But you know what everybody waits for? And that's why I'm so happy. And I have to say, shout out Graham for preserving. 
but 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 oh when they hear dirty i'm telling you people just lose their it's like they can't wait for that moment and i think genres need things like that I can't wait to like. I but can't wait, di- but it's different though. It's di- I don't mind. It's different. When Jay Z does, feels if, different. If Jay Z done something with Kanye West today, there's an appreciation that it's happened, but it's gonna feel different. It's not gonna feel like 2011 when he dropped. Um, yeah. it, that energy was crazy. But we're looking about like how far is the gap? D double gap is massive. If you still can go oh oh today when D double done that in like 2005 2004 yeah. and it's 2020, that's 20 years yeah. of an ad lib yeah. you loving. That it means that group of people have preserved that, looked after that, respected Got that. You. So every Got generation you. moving forward can always go. And do you know what that does for everybody in that genre? That means D-Double is in a position where you can go, Footsie and all these other guys are still cold as well. Now they have a position. It's like, it keeps the money in the same space. I just think it's incredible. Whereas in rap, the moment someone thinks you're faded, you're, you're just out of the equation, bro. You're never going to see. Yeah, you, you don't know I had to tweet that today as well, man. What's this? Come on, man, D-Double. And shout out my brother there as this? well, man. What is this? What are we seeing here? For so D-Double is in Shoreditch just showing, man, why he's the hardest. Oh, is it? Yeah. And you know what? Oh, look gonna... at the way that he, bro. The everything about D-Double. Bro, let me tell you something, yeah? Oh, bro, I do not. I could do, do this all day. And you know what? This guy here, that's, um, I'm not going to, I'll talk about him another time, but you see the guy that's DJing him? Yeah. Absolute DJing him. The guy that's DJing with him, Absolute legend. He clashed me back in the day, 2008. Bro, he the stance, the it's the stance, bro. Yeah. It's the stance, it's everything. Everything, bro. Everything about this is just rude, boy. Everything. Without even hearing it. Do you get what I'm saying? Even the fact that saying he's the Ronaldinho of UK music. Yeah. Who said that? This is the senior figures in our... You see how they speak about him? So then if there's... If Lippy's a senior person in our scene and there's a group of younger individuals that love Lippy, they're going to respect what Lippy's saying. D-double is the Ronaldinho We even said this yesterday, UK yeah? Music. We even said this yesterday. Some people that are, don't really know much about our scene will come over. If all of the senior people that they do know are saying this about D-double, you know that becomes truth. Yeah. Them ignorantly, that becomes truth. <laughs> I pause it. Do you know what? I, do you know what I can go even further? Do you know? Who, do you know? I saw the pop car I'm bigging up like randomly this year so many times, and it's not random because I realise he does it so much. Yeah, he does it. Barry Salmon. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. is a whole other generation, generation yeah, yeah. away, you know, and that's what I'm speaking about. That keeps Barry that's Salmon. That's a couple generations away. A couple that. Keeps... But they look at they look at Barry like. They will look at Beres as like granddad or dad or uncle. Do you get that, what I'm saying? Now pause that. And, as a, and in a respectful way. So then how do people look at their granddads and dads and uncles in this country just away from music? <laughs> it's not the same. I'm telling you, <laughs> um, you think it's not the same. But because I have respect for my family, I look at these individuals like members of, I've listened to Beres Hammond my whole life because of my dad. I got a rebuttal and, though. I got, got a you. slight rebuttal. The rebuttal is, is that, if, with all due respect to those people who might see their family differently, they will find people that they do find as them like their brother. In- yeah, so like, you know, there's times where people have come to me and said to me, bro, bro, I don't have a brother, but I feel like, you feel like my family. Do you get what I'm saying? So they might come here to hear man talk because, you get what I'm saying? There's so like, they've never they, had they, a brother got before. Something. They don't know what a brother feels like, but they're going to tell me, I feel like a brother. I will say congratulations, my guy. You are mad, but I don't mind. <laughs> we can still continue with life. But you can't tell me something feels like something you've never had. That's just, uh, until your mum opens her legs yeah. and that little boy comes flying out. This is all interpretation. Yeah, but you could not have a father figure and and or never had a father figure in your life, and then you meet somebody and it feels like that is a father figure. That's your interpretation of what a father figure might. And look remember, like. that's your interpretation with no father ever in your life. You yeah. just have to remember that truth. I'm not yeah. saying it can't be what it is, but we have to remember the truth of you've never had a father but figure. But remember, you could be a father figure and be a shit one. Of course that you can. It doesn't mean that you're- So you've had one. You've had a shit, ex- that's the truth. <laughs> Listen, I only deal with reality and I, that's my thing. We can all meet in reality, but in the subconscious, that lives there. I don't know what's going on. Because, yeah, man. But it's mad though. But I think the generational gap thing is interesting. So. It is interesting. But, and it's sad that um, Method Man and Red Man have that approach to Summer Jam, because I still feel like Yes, it is. Your point is valid, but I still think awareness there, Method and Red. You should look to that lineup and said, especially with the amount of videos that go and show you what the numbers that Quavo is doing uh, recently, most recently, no disrespect to Quavo, and most recently Nelly as well. Like these are, 
if you don't do the right marketing and sort your situation out, it can be an embarrassing moment. So also, about- I think I think it's sometimes maybe like it's a stage thing as well. It's maybe you 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 know you have a certain. I mean, now nah, that doesn't always work because even if you separate the stages, say you have like the 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 popular ones on one stage and you have the legacy ones on a different stage, then there's no education in that or there's the, ed- the education is minimal. It's just a lineup, Chucky. Do you understand what I'm saying? But Chucky, it's the lineup. If you have a lineup which, like Method and Red should never have been on that lineup. It's just that simple. Mm. They have no business on that lineup. It's not doing them any favours. Yeah. They can collect a check, but they've got no business on that lineup. I have to do lineups for Vibber shows. I know the lineups that will complement and make everyone be all right. I would never have said, I would, if you take um, Meth and Red out of that and then look at that lineup, do you ever think they needed to have been there? Like, really? Like, what are we doing? But clearly, they obviously they must have had separate stages because they had other legacy acts there. Oh, so they, Jadakus. Um, yeah. Oh, there was other people there as well. Yeah. Fact. That's what that section is, isn't it? Do you know what Mr. C did? Anyway. Yeah, but still, look at that, though, man. You're having Jadakus on the same stage as Doja Cat and friends. Like, I, honestly, for me personally, this never it's happened growing up when I was around. It's done so. wrong. But you huh? know we don't. There's something that Mr. C did that I don't think people still talk about anymore, and I don't really want to do it. But I don't. Know. Has everyone forgotten about it? What? The, when he was in the car, when he got caught with the with the trans. Uh, do you know what? Forget about it. Anyway, so <laughs> um, so I didn't say that. But anyway, big up Mr. C. Um, what was I gonna say? That is wild. Young Buck as well. But carry on. Oh yeah. And Bobby Valentino. But carry on. Bobby. Bobby. Yeah, you gotta slow down, big man. <laughs> hey, Google Pixel out now. Come on. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. But naturally, always gonna be a generational gap in that, man. And like, I just, it's always interesting when you start seeing it unfold. Because when you um, come into this thing and you're young and you're just around what you're around and it's just sick. And then you get older and things are changing and new artists are coming in and sounds are changing and all kinds of things. And you, the, the scene gets bigger and you go into the shows and the people are starting to look different and there's all kinds of things yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. It's like super interesting because you, you can get to a point where it's like, this person that I hold to the highest degree, are oh, you not ain't, you ain't, you not work there. But you have to remember, nah, they have their thing. Teams don't have their You have to. And do you know one thing I think you should always remember in life? That is, life is a journey, Chucky. Life's a journey. So if a man starts a journey 10 years before me and they're still making money out of this thing, but I'm making more money and I've been here for three years. Do you know why I can't shit on this guy? I've got seven more years to figure out if I can still make it to their 10 year mark. Mm. Whereas some people being in the game for two, three years are like, ah, look at me, I'm in the game, I've clocked it. I'm like, no, that is, if you take a look at everyone's journey that's ever come before you, that's usually how it starts. The question is, how does it end? And I think so much people have just got recency bias. That's why they don't want to even think about the past. Because you know what? If you think about the past and you take a look at the possibility of your business going left, that might potentially throw you off from where you are. You've got this euphoria. You're just like, yeah, I'm I'm the man. Some of you lot need to wake that fuck up. Like Chucky said, if you don't have a home, Mm. eventually people will remind you you're homeless. Maybe not whilst you're the most popular guy. Yeah, come stay at my house. Yeah, you can stay for as long as you want. You know when all of a sudden you can still smell their socks and you're just like, you know what, yeah. big man, you need to get out of my house. It happens to people. So I always say on this life, this journey of life, whatever you're carrying with you to make that journey faster, keep it in the vehicle. If you add something, even if it makes your insecurity feel a little bit better for a period of time, but it's slowing down your journey, get rid of it. Yeah. Get I, rid of it. I Don't also, you know what I'm speaking? I take it offensively. I'm insecure. <laughs> Okay. Or, <laughs> also, for me as well, yeah, when I look at the artists that have been around for a long period of time, all I look for out of them now, the ones that I like, mm. is the ones to just continue to embrace the value in which they're in now and what their experience is now and not necessarily feel like they have to indulge into who they were when they were 16, 17, 18 or whatever. Do you get what I'm saying? Thank you! Like, I think that there's a strong value in being who you are and where you are now because no, we didn't have that before. We didn't even see it. And there's an element of re- relatability for me personally anyway, being 
from some of the places that they're from. Do you understand what I'm saying? 100% my brother. And isn't there a relatability in seeing something genuine and sincere even if you don't know nothing about that person's life? Yeah. If you consider yourself a genuine, sincere person or a real person, when you see it from somebody else, like I can see a football fan crying like when Man City won the league. I said to someone the other day, I contemplated whether I was a Man City fan for five seconds. I couldn't believe how real that emotion was to me. I'm like, I see it. And I think in music... It's funny because me and this person, me and someone were having a discussion this morning after horizontally jogging, and I was saying the reasons why I love "Special Kind of Fool" by H Town. Oh my! It's because it's a man genuinely under the dopest beat on an album called "Ladies Edition," telling you the reasons why he loves you. He's telling you if I made ten mil, I would give you five. Yeah, and that comes with a house and a car. I'm like that. I don't hear that no more. I don't even feel that no more. You know what Tyrese said about that? Not Tyrese Tank. In yeah. an interview, he was saying that he feels, yeah, that men are not making love to their woman a certain way anymore. And this is why he's saying certain R&B artists, they don't even know how to do that now because that's just not even what they're doing. They're more into the toxic thing, if anything, or they're just fucking. He said, if you just make love, if you like take some time to make love, brother, to make love, it will at some point, feature within the music. Because it's the a man not making it's love. true, I'm hearing you, but do you know what? When was the last time you made love? This morning, but that's enough about me. To um, bits. No, did you really? Slow grinding them type of thing there. Yeah, but- No, did you make love though? My brother, my brother, the album was done. <laughs> oh wait, was you H-Town in last night? To H-Town, ladies edition. What do you think yeah, this you is, Mark? up yesterday. My brother. Right that, but you know what I mean. Yeah, come on, my guy. I know the respect you to these, like, to people. I'm not trying to be too arrogant, but it is what it is. I don't believe every lady should have access to me, but the ones that do have that privilege, why not? Why don't we just go for it? My why don't we just go God. for it? Why don't we go saying? for it? Huh? Have a good time, watch a film, drink, all of these types of things. I keep saying, see that journey to having sex? It needs to be so worth it that when she goes, I'm ready, yeah. you, you're seeing a side to her you didn't even know existed. Right, because you yeah. made her feel that good. Yes. H-Town. That's all I'm saying, people. H-Town. EA, talk loud. When was the last time you made love? No, no, no. no. When was the last time you made love? Not the... Like, not the process of having sex. Yeah, but not I'm having about, sex. Like, I'm talking about like... I'm talking about that you was really... Do you get what I'm saying? Like maybe three weeks ago. That's oh, better. is it? Yeah. Like, I, like me and my girl just fixed like a beef, and then like I gave her like a massage, with, like, right. some R and B. Yeah. Head to toe. Head to toe like, in baby that. Baby oil. Baby oil in that. Yeah. Did you put some of the cream around the toe in that as well? Did yeah. you did you put it in th- yeah, in the man, thing? Man gets the yeah, I hear that. Oh, you put it all behind the her ear that. This is That's making love it. now. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah Come on. Yeah. When you appreciate the areola, that's love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, and my guy. Obvi- like, obviously, this is going to sound crazy, but you see when it was time to finish, mm. did you finish slow or did you go mad? If you finish slow, you was really making love. <laughs> but don't lie, though. When I get to that point, man, I have to speed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you say, go gear four, at least. I really... <laughs> you say that, yeah, but there's certain positions Wait, where can you can you, lock can... in in the hug, yeah, where it doesn't require... It yeah. just requires... Yeah, yeah. And then what happens, it feels so crazy that it could be slow. You're just like, oh my, brother, <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now, yeah, it's like, when you're about to, like, yeah. have, you, have you ever, like, you're about to nut, but like, you never, you never fully nut it? Just in general. What do you mean, like, never like, fully nut? never all came Of course. Up. Right. Yeah. So, but I don't like those nuts like it's that. It's the rubbish. Yeah, I know, yeah, they're, they're, they're the worst. So like, when it, so, like, because of that, I've realised that, that that's because, that like, maybe... There's a slow down, so like I don't want to ever feel that. So just to make sure that it all comes down. It isn't though. I oh yeah, you, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go gear four at least. But here it's not because of that. I promise you, man. Now, you, man. I don't forget because I think right. when I think about the time when I when it's just. I can't even remember the last. It's when time I'm trying to take it. it out from not like, bussing in. It ruins the. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, oh, yeah. Completely. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that was a waste. Like I geared up to that moment <laughs> to do that, and now I'm just like. It's funny nah, how the man. whole experience feels like it's a waste now. I'm cause... telling you, bro, because I wasn't I wasn't making love though. Right. I'm saying when you make love, you don't even need a million positions. No. When you're, you when you're, what I, what I like to do is, well, you know, fucking, 
It was all like seven positions sometimes. We'd end up in the kitchen and bare things going in. What, oh, when you're just chopping? Yeah, because oh, yeah, now yeah, yeah. we still need to have a good time in that. Yeah. It's an adventure. That the making love to to skin. And I can finish mad slow. Brother. I can finish mad slow. Huh? When was the last time I made love? That's why he was late. Um. No, where are they? Do you know what? The time that I would say that I truly, truly did it, the feelings was different. Do you get what I'm saying? Because the person that I was doing that with, I just... I, st- I actually still, I actually remember and know why and how I get there. I'm just going to give bare information that like I just overshare sometimes. So <laughs> I think, yeah, what it is for me is that now I get to a point where it's like, oh my God, I really like you. Say like a person could, I could be with a girl, yeah. I could be in a relationship. I could be in a relationship for however long, yeah. And there will just be these moments where I just think, wow, oh, I just really like, I just, you know, obviously, I, I like I'm into this year, but there's something about today that just made me realize, nah, nah, you're just, I'm not even paying attention to what she's telling me now. I'm just so, I just like you so much. Do you know what And so you... in that, it's yes. now reflective in that part now. That's now I'm kissing a little bit different because yes. I'm just so into you. And then I can finish hella slow. Yes! You get what I'm saying? Where's what? my girl? As long as I'm just locked. The, you get what I'm saying? The vibe that I'm in now. Yes. What? To pieces. I'm all listen, the way. My brother, I understand. I overstand. I overstand, my hmm? brother. I'm not answering that. Question. You see that process you spoke about when you said, oh my God, you look so nice right now? Yeah. I believe that is when... I, I believe there's different ways to look at a woman sometimes. You can yeah, think a girl's pretty. You can think a girl's beautiful. I feel that's when the exterior and the interior match up. When you're like, oh my God, she's pretty and there's a beauty inside. Beautiful. Yeah. And then there's attractive. Now right. attractive is very dangerous. Because I can't make sense of it. With pretty, I can break it down. I can tell you aesthetically why I like it. With beauty, I can tell you all the things inside. And with beautiful, I can tell you how they connect. With attraction, I'm just over here. And sometimes I wake up and I'm like, babe, I don't know how that happened, why that happened. But my body... Is just consistently yearning for you at times. Yeah. And I can't and I can't understand yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's yeah, attraction. I, I think attraction I is that. dangerous, man. Because attraction can change depending on where you are in life. You will see what you're attracted to. Where I kind of feel like the things that you value will always their beauty. And even down to aesthetics, what you think is pretty, it never really deviates. It just grows, yeah. if that makes any sense. Whereas attraction is different. Very di- Yeah, the attraction. I hear exactly what you're saying. Can but you can you go on? Can you make love not be in love? Yes. Carry on. Next one. Yeah, because I was gonna say like, I can do the, I can I can do the same thing that I would do with somebody else, and the feelings be different, but the package is still the same. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I still might give the same package, and I still I'm still very much into this. I'm still we're still making love in its physical form. But mentally, it's a bit different. There's you something what I'm missing, bro. Yeah, it's, well, I don't even. I mean, I don't even see it as missing. I'm just seeing it as going back to what kind of what you're saying is like. Oh, I'm really attracted to this person, and I wanna. I just wanna have this experience with them tonight. Do you get what yes. I'm saying? And that experience is, you know, R and B, some slow jams or whatever, and I'm providing a service and stuff. Do you get what I'm saying? 100. A certain type of way. But the feeling is different. Where. When I really like somebody, I could do exactly the same thing, but my feeling is like, oh my God. You see when you find a beautiful girl, so she's pretty, there's inner beauty and you're attracted, that's when you put the ring on the finger. Mm. That's when you put the ring on the finger. When she can just come home, her hair's messy, she's not your generic version of pretty, you're not even seeing anything to make you recognize the beauty, but there's just this attraction. You know the other two exist. But right now, there's just attraction. Jesus Christ. She man. definitely needs to have some substance before you put that ring on that finger as well, though, because she can have all of that. But, but that's why? the beauty. The inner beauty is the substance. Oh, yeah, you're right. The inner beauty. The inner yep. beauty is the substance, man. So, yeah, man. But I'm I'm not saying I'm yet to find it, but I'm yet to notice it, which yeah. means maybe it's there, but I can't see. <laughs> it's how it's going to come, though. Have you got any howlers? Do you know? I don't know if I do. Let's take a look at the phone. Hey, you still got time. Got 10 minutes? No. Yeah. What happened? What? Dan pulled a few strings. Where is he? Oh. Mate, I'm 
making money. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so there's a couple of things I just want to show because I said I did say to you a long, a long time ago. I need to find a way to repackage this because. Oh shit! Sorry. Right, so I see you're doing my thing as well. All right, so I'm gonna start looking for this one video of this boy called Specs Gonzalez. Oh my god. It's the tears for me, bro. It's the tears for me. Nah. Peace out. He genuinely is. Yeah, no, he is. What was that? Guys, I know, um... <laughs> obviously, I've been busting joke all week. Hmm. Uh, remember when I told you, um... My, um... That my parents. Mm -hmm. They came back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I swear to the fucking God. What happened? They faked their death. <laughs> He's, <laughs> <an> <laughs> <idiot>. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually crying as well, you know. He did that really well. Where are, like, so what is this? The, the, the side men have done a show where it's the equivalent to a big brother, equivalent to a foot asylum locked in where they get a load of people that stayed in the house for a week, no social media, or so on and so forth. And I think being with someone like Specs in that environment, who's also been in prison, I think is a blessing. He knows how to do deal with it and how to break up the day. He is possibly the funniest person online. He is hilarious. Yeah, I don't think anything's close. You cannot have a serious moment with this guy, you know? Because anywhere you have, a, you have a serious moment with him and at any point, just, there's a joke in there somewhere. 100 million percent. Uh, there's a joke in there. Out of the absolute blue. We had Have you been watching this anyway? Nah, nah. It's not my type of, no disrespect, go-to yeah. content, you know what I'm saying? But support it. It's doing really well. Shout out. It. There's the guy from AMP. What's in it, it called? That's my guy though. Inside? Oh, it's called Inside, yeah? Yeah. And it's the Sidemen's thing, yeah? Yes, yeah, it is a Sidemen. Shout out to the Sidemen. So, yeah, man. It's good to see um, Elevation. Everyone doing well. It's nice. So, that, oh, I found man, that really, yeah, really funny, true. man. I can't lie. Huh? What, other ho what howlers are there, though? Cause Chuck, you don't put them in the group all the time. I do, but Chuck, you know, as of recent, because I want them to be of substantial weight. I think the only one that I guess is a little bit upsetting, but I'm tired of talking about them, is the English press. And um, bloody hell, man, Denzel Washington said it best. Like, if you don't watch the news, you're uninformed. Yeah. If you do watch the news, you're ill-informed. And it's like, when I take a look at... I was at the England game yesterday, uh, courtesy... Whoops. I was at the England game yesterday... Courtesy of Google. Shout out Google Pixel, you don't know, it's the only phone to use. I don't even know why you got iPhone. Right I, I don't know what you're doing. I'm just dash this block. Yeah, man. We are, we are dealing with that. We are, come Shut on. Up. Anyway, so <clears throat> on my Google Pixel now, I was noticing that the English press have decided to, to, to gear to the left and it feels a little bit like 2021 when Sancho Rashford and Saka missed penalties. They lost 1-0 on Friday night to a Iceland side that celebrated after winning the friendly. Gareth Southgate's last game before he steps into the Euro qualifiers. And first game will be against Serbia. Lost 1-0. They didn't look like they even had an opportunity to score. Didn't play well. And yet we point the fingers. Not necessarily, but we, uh, we highlight these players. Saka and Kobe Mainu when speaking about England being poor and then show the face of Cole Palmer when speaking about England doing well. Now there's many different things that's really wrong with this. Cole Palmer's actually from St. Kitts. So he's actually the same as Saka. You should have actually also been throwing him under the bus as well. But due to the fact he has the exterior and the appearance of your friend Colin from Stevenage, he now doesn't get thrown under the bus because he's been told he played well. Chucky, I was there. Yeah, okay. I was there. I was there. That wasn't a good performance from England. Everyone. And there was loads of people you could have pointed at. You could have pointed at Harry Kane. You could have... And I'm just getting a little bit tired. And this is the reasons why. The Kobe Mainu thing. I was not all the way 100 with it. Because this is going to happen. They build you up. One bad game in a friendly. All of a sudden, we're not sure about Kobe Mainu in midfield over. 90 minute game friendly. On a Friday night. Against Iceland. Buy one, get one free. These men go wait trolls. Yeah. They don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just a bit tired of the press. Shout out Liverpool. You can't purchase the sun over there. No, of course you absolutely can't do that. That's why I got a shout out Liverpool. Um, put, put your foot down, man. You know, it's one of them things, yeah, where we will always call it out when we see it, but 
at this point, it feels like it's that's not even going to change. It's going to continue to... And the reason why I feel like they're just going to continue to do it is because a lot of the time, these people that are writing these articles are faceless. But if we start exposing who these people actually are, then it might be a little bit different. If we start putting a face to these names that they write down, um, written by so-and-so and such-and-such, -and -such, then maybe it would look a little different. But it's almost... Some of them... It's almost like the equivalency of being able to just go on Twitter with uh, a random picture of an alien and just saying whatever it is that you say. The The difference being is that they've got such a broad audience because they could just give this to inner England and feed into... And remember, a lot of the time, yeah, this is just bigger than football, you know. They just use this to drive other elements of politics. Oh, all the time, Immigration, bro. all kinds of stuff. You, 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 they're, you're already subconsciously putting a face to something that is bad or something that is holding the country back. Or so, do you understand what I'm saying? Like all of these type of things. So now when it's time to, when, you know, um, you know, governments and politicians start talking about their manifestos and what they want to do and this, that and the thing and how they want to reshape the country, subconsciously you're already looking at the stuff that you've been seeing in the newspaper about at the faces that you see of each person who looks bad and you tie them to a certain thing. So now I'm going to vote for that. It's like, it's deep, It's quite deep when it's you look at it. Manipulation but it's like, in its finest that's, what, form. that's why they continue to just do it and over and over and over again. <coughs> it's bonkers. Chucky, one thing I will say is I use, always use like, I look at, let's look at Marcus Rashford. This is a great example. Marcus Rashford. This is the reason why I feel sorry for footballers like that community. Now, if Marcus Rashford's is in the cultural community, mm -hmm. the same things will always happen to him whilst he plays for Manchester United. Right. And he will eventually accept it. Yes. We will always tease you because you play for Manchester United. Yeah, yeah. If you go and feed these children, we will call you a dinner lady. Right. When you score bare goals, we will say my bad, Marcus Rashford. Yeah, yeah. This is the way it's going to be. Now, in commercial media, there's an inconsistency that I can see gets to him and he's consistently making statements. Because he goes and feeds the children. Now, if you're of that side and you go, that's amazing. What a great man. You can't get mad at him if you see him partying. You're meant to give him a blight. You know he's a good man at heart. Exactly. Whereas on our side, it don't matter that we think he's a good man. You're a dinner lady. And we find it funny. So then eventually he'll understand if he stays in this side, there's no ill feeling. We just want to have a laugh. You play for Man United, you're the enemy. We're never going to be fully cool with you until you come to Arsenal. And then I'll pretend I yeah, never said it. But watch it over yeah, there. Yeah. Come on, we'll find everything under the bloody book to try and get on you. Yeah. Whereas in, I feel sorry for his brand in that world because he does, for commercial media, for me, he does nothing where you should even get on him. To the point now, he's just wearing bear chains and nah, not but, care. But you know what? Maybe I misinterpreted what you're saying. I sorry, think everyone, on. like bands aside, and alliances aside, would look at some of those things that he's done and said, yeah, no, I respect that. But because of the way that we are within the football tribe, if it's not a part of the thing, you'll use it again. No, the but the football tribe, and that is completely different. The football tribe live by the same metrics. Right. We don't care what good you do, we'll use it against you. Whether yeah. that's right or wrong, we'll have a separate right, conversation. Yeah. But yeah. that consistency over there will keep you sane. Yeah. You can just say, oh, don't yeah. do that, bro. They yeah, don't yeah, even yeah. care. You, over you here, yeah, yeah. brother, one minute they're like, we love Marcus, we love Marcus, we love Marcus. Then them same guys are like, you're a prick. Yeah. It's just like, wait a minute, for what? For the... There's an inconsistency there. They make it seem like they love you, then they hate you, where we've never claimed to love you. You play for Man United. Mm -hmm. We can't love you. So I just think, when I look at young footballers like that in this situation, I'm like, bro, I hope Kobe Mainu don't have to go through that. They will, though. I hope Saka don't have to go through that anymore. Of course. Well, Saka's been for a, a, a bag of it. You know he's bulletproof, innit? What do you mean? Out of all of these footballers, that's the one that I think is bulletproof. I think Saka is bulletproof. I think you can say what you want about him. That brother brought to a YouTube video. What's that video where they tell you, is it that magazine, the Vogel? He brought his Bible to the GQ thing. Their man are bulletproof. Mm. Yeah. Can't I, stop. I, and I respect that. When you get respect to that place, that. when you get to that place, I think it's a beautiful place to be. But even with that being bulletproof, you shouldn't even be firing shots at man like that. Of Them course not, but I don't think he lives over there. The fact that he's got his Bible and all of that, he lives yeah. in a place where there's a consistency you'll understand. That's why I feel sorry for people like Marcus Rashford. Because yeah. he's actually trying to help. 
<laughs> yeah. He's genuinely trying to help. Like he's actually out of all of these guys yeah. trying to help. Yeah. And this yeah. is the thanks he gets. Hafini your picnic. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. This is crazy. It's Whereas crazy. we never cared that you've had the picnic in the first place. You play for Man United. <laughs> Consistency will help you people. Can they at least get to the finals this time at least? They won't win, doesn't matter. That's my perception yeah. of the situation. I don't believe that they have an individual that is interesting enough for them to win. Yeah. I don't think he is. I think in every single group, the leader is always some type of charismatic individual or leaves or knows how to go. He's the charismatic person. Let me make that the almost the focal point of the changing room or so and so forth. I just don't think that happens with Gareth Southgate. I think he's trying to take charge. I think he's trying to do all of the right things. But he's probably an under-21 coach. I'll tell you, manager. I don't, I don't think he can deal with the elites like that. I don't think so, anyway. Mm. I don't look at him as an elite character in his mind. I yeah, yeah. He was a great, knowledgeable man. But when he speaks, I'm not inspired. Yeah. When Jose speaks, I'll do anything for him. When Pep yeah. speaks, when Jet Black Hair, Mick Do you know what that man have? God. X Factor. I hear you. And you know who had that as well? Lauren Hill, number one album on Apple Music. To pieces. It's crazy. But yeah, I don't know about that number one thing. Oh, damn, but I was meant yeah. to talk about it this week as well, man. Do you want to do that again? Why? It's what not did why. you? Huh? It's not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I didn't actually go for, I, that one thing I should have done is I should have went through the, what, the, the top 100. But I just thought the fact that Bob Marley wasn't even in the top 10 was crazy to me. I hear what you're in, saying. In, but judging by what was there, and also another thing that I think I said last week too was that I'm always really curious to understand how you judge all of those albums like that. All of this this wide range of albums. Like I can do some personal stuff on a sense of like albums that I had these emotional connections to and whatever and I can tie them that way. So I could I could say, oh, you know what, like, you know, there's a 1975 album that I might hold up a certain way because you love I listen to it. Yeah, yeah. I you listen, love yeah, them, yeah. innit? Why That's are you running? Come on. Bro, I love them, man. I can see the smoke. But I'm only tying it to an emotional connection and how it might have made me feel at this particular time mm. or whatever else. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? 100. But as a, like, as a, as an actual thing, I couldn't necessarily judge all of these, why, these albums. I just couldn't, I just can't do it. So big up to all those who are able to fucking do that. Do that. Like you just, there's a, a Tyler Swift with a Jay Z with a Usher with a fucking um, uh, a Britney Spears. I'm probably assuming a Britney Spears is probably somewhere in there. Like, Beyonce just, is number ten with Lemonade above yeah. Exodus. I mean, who cares about Exodus? <laughs> Movement of Ja people. Get me some Lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. Oh, I'm a Gigi. Everyone. Doing? Oh yeah. Before you do That's go. Fine. I need every, everyone that's watching, wake up for a split second. Just wake up. Go on. I want you to go and find me the stories and all of the artifacts about how Christianity got to Africa. Did it exist there? Was it brought? Give me all the information. It's time for me to go and do some research. Okay. Yeah, and you want to go and find out about the Ethiopian thing as well. A lot of comments said, Chucky's onto it. Give me some education about that, people. I have a little have a little look on that. Come you know on. I mean? A little dive. A little Gareth Bale when he played for Tottenham. Love you all. All right, buddy. Listen, thanks for listening, everyone, yeah? Love. Well, you got a plan for the rest of the day, bro? Well, looking at cold food, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs>